This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1842. Exactly how I cut my exercise time in half and got better physique results. Part two by Jill Coleman of jillfit.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more. Just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors and always with permission from the sites. Now, I hope that as you listen to this podcast, you feel as though you're learning new and helpful stuff. That's really the goal of not only this show, but all of the shows in our OLD network. And I hope once in a while, you take a moment and reflect on some of the stuff you learned or appreciated or found fascinating. Share the information with someone. That's one of the best ways to help your brain hang on to that information. Look at me, I sound like I'm talking to my students in one of my classes. Anywho, the whole point of that little speech was to introduce you to today's inspirational quote. So, here we go. Quote, if you don't look back at yourself and think, wow, how stupid I was a year ago, then you must not have learned much the last year. Ray Dalio. All right, now remember, today's post is part two from yesterday. So, if you're new here or skipping around, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That was episode 1841. But if you're all caught up, let's finally get to part two and continue optimizing your life. Exactly how I cut my exercise time in half and got better physique results. Part two by Jill Coleman of jillfit.com. R, rest and recovery. The only way intense exercise can remain sustainable and the body can continue to respond depends entirely on the amount and quality of your rest. I know it sounds cliche, like, gotta get your rest, duh. But so many don't listen because they power through, try to be a superhero, and try to train intensely day after day, sometimes ignoring the fact that it's not working, or they're feeling worse, or they're experiencing symptoms of overtraining. I know because I was that control freak, type A personality that was trying to do just that. But our metabolism doesn't work like that. Remember the catecholamines, adrenaline and noradrenaline and cortisol? These are metabolic gas pedals, fat and sometimes muscle burning hormones released from the adrenal glands required during movement. Think sympathetic nervous system response. Catabolic hormones don't just keep pumping out all the time without consequence. The more your body calls on them to be utilized, the more the body taxes the nutritional building blocks of these hormones. This is a super simple explanation of eventual adrenal fatigue, which becomes a chronic condition. The molecules that are required to synthesize the hormones need to be replenished nutritionally, and your adrenals need to be given some downtime. This is called toning the adrenals, and you might have learned it in school as the parasympathetic response. Your body needs both the yin and the yang to continue to perform optimally and continue being responsive to intense movement. My favorite restorative activity is leisure walking. I do this one to two times a day for an hour, just nice, slow walking. This lowers stress and helps the body recover. Of course, adequate sleep and implementing other stress-reducing activities like massage, hot baths, meditation, journaling, reading, and so on is important, not to mention taking days off. I, intensity. It's no surprise that intensity impacts results. The more intensely you train, the more force you put on the body to respond. But your ability to actually train intensely depends on a few things. Time, workouts need to be short. Recovery, only push when you have plenty of downtime. Nutrition quality and having a level of self-awareness required to understand how intense feels for you since it's subjective based on your own rate of perceived exertion. I'm a huge fan of metabolic effects, rest-based training concept. Resting as much as needed during the workout. No set right periods. Research shows that when exercisers are in charge of their own rest intervals, duration and intensity, they push harder overall. This is in line with general research on autonomy and self-responsibility. In general, you wanna think about intensity in two ways, level of breathlessness and level of muscular demand or exertion. You can reach muscle failure without getting breathless, and you can get out of breath without feeling any muscle exertion. 
The aim is to generate both at different times during your workouts. Not the whole time, but sometimes. Once you reach breathlessness or muscle burning or fatigue, rest until you can do it again at the same intensity. This is a kind of self-generated interval training and it's individually tailored to you. It's critical that you learn and listen to your body in order to do this safely. N, nutrient repletion. Your diet, not meal plan diet, but literally the way you eat, needs to support your movement. More intense exercise will require diligent repletion. Protein is important for muscle maintenance, but a full range of healthy fats and starches are needed to refuel, keep the metabolism at full responsiveness, and help with vitamin and mineral absorption. In fact, one overlooked piece of the nutrition puzzle is micronutrition, vitamins and minerals. If protein, fats, and carbs are the kings of the metabolism, then these are the molecules at their beck and call, needed to help protein, fats, and carbs to be metabolized optimally. Of course, the best and ideal way to get these babies is through a high fruit and veggie diet. But in general, taking a good multivitamin, high-quality omega-3s, and probably some magnesium and even L-glutamine, an amino acid that aids both the GI tract and in muscle recovery, especially in advanced-level exercisers, may be worth it. Supplements, though, are just that meant to supplement a diet rich in variety anyway. But for those training intensely, it's an important consideration. And T, train heavy. I don't care if you're a 15-year-old boy or a 65-year-old woman. Your muscles need to be taxed enough to respond. And that happens through progressive overload. Will you turn into the Hulk? No. But what you will do is add leanness to your body while also taking off inches in other places. Not that you have to change your body at all, but if the goal is to improve health, body composition, and performance, then you can't get away from weight training, especially with a heavier weight than what's comfy. So many ask me, but what's heavy? Well, it's subjective. Each person is different. Jen Sinclair will squat 270 pounds after not doing it for six months, while someone else will achieve a personal record at 65 pounds. Totally fine and perfect. What is key, however, is how heavy something feels for you. And you need to build up slowly so that your movement stays controlled and safe. Building a base of strength primes neuromuscular movement patterns, changes the shape of the body, and allows for you to add weight safely over time. But in general, you can lift more than you are giving yourself credit for. My mom, I love her, defaults to eight pound dumbbells always. Sure. For some movements, they're sufficient, but not for things like squats, rows, step-ups, and so on. Most of us can add 5 to 10 pounds to what we've been using and still be safe and in control. Have body awareness and actually think about how each exercise is feeling in the moment, weight-wise. I'll do lateral raises with 15 pounds, but Arnold presses with 30 pounds. Both are shoulder movements, but have different lever lengths and recruited muscles. Have some self-awareness and increase if you can, even for just a single set. Your body responds when you challenge it. But yes, be safe. Yes, have great form and build your strength slowly so that you can handle more weight. But I truly feel like the message of add some weight, baby, is not happening enough. You've got it. Know your body. Move with control and stay aware. That's it. The recipe for shorter workouts, 30 minutes or less, and better results. Intensity is key, but only if sustained through things like nutrition and recovery. Use the SPRINT acronym. There are a million considerations when it comes to your nutrition and training, but if the goal is to change the shape of the body, then you can't get away from intensity in your training, and in order to do that, you need to keep things short and with plenty of recovery. Do a few key things well and consistently, rather than changing things up every day, and your body will respond. You just listened to part two of the post titled Exactly How I Cut My Exercise Time in Half and Got Better Physique Results by Jill Coleman of jillfit.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. It can feel scary trying to add more weight or resistance to your movements. That's when you hear about those horror stories of people getting some life-altering injury or see those awful gym fail videos. But adding weight or resistance safely is really important. 
just as today's author Jill said, your body will start to get comfortable and as a result, you'll stop making progress. The American College of Sports Medicine does have some general guidelines when it comes to safely adding weight to some standard weight training exercises. If you're performing a movement where you're using mostly the muscles in your upper body, for example, like your arms, shoulders, or chest, and you wanna increase the amount of weight you're lifting, they say add no more than five pounds total at a time. Adding too much weight to upper body movements can lead to injury. That's because these muscles are smaller than those found, say, in the lower body, so they can't handle a dramatic increase in weight like our legs can. Now, let's say you've been performing bicep curls with a five-pound dumbbell in each hand. Now, let's say the weight seems light, meaning you could easily perform 15 repetitions of these curls without stopping. Then, that means it's time to increase the weight. So, the next time, you can hold 10-pound dumbbells in each hand. So let's say now you're holding those 10-pound dumbbells in each hand. You try and lift them, but you can only perform five curls now. In that case, well, you might need to find a weight in between. It may mean you've gone a little bit too heavy. So maybe find seven and a half pound dumbbells. That's basically how this works. Try out the new weight, and if you can perform, I would say, eight to 12 reps, then that's perfect. If you can perform less than eight, it's probably a little bit too heavy. Now, when you wanna add weight, when you're exercising your lower body, like your legs, you can add up to 20 pounds. So 20 pounds or less. So you use the same process I just described. If you can lift the weight 15 or more times, add some more, just no more than 20 pounds at a time. Following this process will help reduce your injury chances. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening every day. I hope you're having a wonderful week and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.